Previously, we looked at the settings available when we create a new WLAN. One of those was client isolation. In this module, we'll go to the client isolation in detail. Let's look at what happens when we have no isolation. So under wireless client isolation, neither of these boxes are ticked. Isolate wireless client from the other clients on the same AP. Isolate wireless client traffic from all hosts on the same VLAN or subnet. In this case, a device joins the WLAN and it can freely connect to and access any of the resources that are on the same network, including devices that are connected to the same access point. And I'll just demonstrate that. So first of all, let's find out what my IP address is. And we can see I'm using an IP address of 192.168.1.202. I also have online my default gateway on 192.168.1.1, my printer on 192.168.1.169, and my iPhone on 192.168.1.172. I can ping them all from my laptop and I'm getting responses. We can see here traffic is flowing nice and smooth with no problems whatsoever. So we can see from this that the network is pretty much open. As soon as I connect up to the access point, I can access any device that's on the same subnet and I can also access any device that's connected to the same access point. The next step then is to isolate wireless client traffic from other clients on the same access point. And the effect this should have is that all LAN traffic and VLAN traffic should be open, but we are not able to connect to devices connected to the same access point. In this case, that'll be from my laptop to the iPhone and any other devices that are connected to the same access point. Let's go back to our monitoring. And as we would expect, we can still see the default gateway, the router. We can still see the printer. However, we no longer have a connection to the iPhone. So we can see here connectivity to the gateway and to the printer, but the iPhone is completely dead. And that's as we would expect. Next, we'll select to isolate wireless client traffic from all hosts on the same VLAN and subnet. The effect this will have will be to block access to any devices on the same VLAN as our device that we've just connected to the access point. However, you'll notice that this solution has a problem we can't reach the DHCP server, or the default gateway, or the portal, or any other resources that we have on the local network that we need to have access to. So you'll see that we have an option here to specify a whitelist. If one doesn't exist, we have the option to create new. And interestingly, if there is no whitelist, we can't actually save this setting. Let me show you. Here we are in the controller, and we can see I've ticked to isolate clients. If I then scroll down and OK, I get an error message telling me that I need to select a whitelist. So let's go back then. Client isolation whitelist. Now, no whitelist exists, so I now have the option to create new. I'll call this the demo whitelist. I'm not going to bother with the description. And I'll select create new to create a new whitelist entry. Description will be gateway and here you see I need to have the MAC address and the IP address. I'll just pull in a command prompt so I just need to change directory to Windows system and then I can just run an ARP command and we can see that the MAC address that I have for my default gateway is this. So I'll just copy this, go back to here, I'll paste in the MAC address However, this MAC address needs to be in a format that the zone director can recognize. So I'll remove the hyphens and replace them with colons. And now add the IP address and save. And there we have our entry into the whitelist. Select OK. And now we have the demo whitelist selected and we should be able to OK and save. So that whitelist is now applied. And let's just confirm what's happening on the network side. So we can see I have connection established to the gateway. However, the printer is now offline and that is on the wired portion of the network, as is the iPhone, which is on the wireless portion of the network. Let's have a look. So traffic down to the gateway is absolutely fine. Traffic to the printer is completely stopped and traffic to the iPhone is completely stopped. So exactly as we would expect. So in summary then, wireless client isolation allows you to stop devices on the same access point from seeing each other and also allows you to prevent wireless clients seeing other devices on the same subnet. But you do need to have that whitelist entry in there for each device that you want to have accessed.